hey, everyone, and welcome to KPC Underground. My name's Aaron. This is the podcast we do from Kirkland Performance Center, right underneath our stage. So we're underneath our stage, and I'm very excited to be here today with none other than Alex Cuba, who's doing a show tonight here at KPC. Just heard your sound check and sounded absolutely incredible. Thrilled that you're here tonight. Really excited for the show, and thanks for sitting down with me for a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, this is truly a beautiful place, and I mm. love how it sounds and yeah. and the people here. Wow, a beautiful place. I'm really happy to be here. Cool. Thank you. You know, you're originally from, from Cuba and uh, kind of moved here sort of half your life ago. I was doing some math on like, okay, yeah. when was he born? And uh, uh -oh. so it was almost 25, it was like 25, you know, uh, 20 or so years ago. Uh, but you, you lived, you know, the first part of your life there, obviously, mm -hmm. and um, came from like musical family and your father's uh, musical and everything. Do you, uh, what was that experience like growing up just in that kind of rich culture of, of music and, and what was that? What, what a beautiful what was that like? question. Yeah, it, it was uh, almost a life of, of, you know, a privileged life mm -hmm. almost because um, music was so, you know, everywhere music was so happy yeah. sharing it, learning it, absorbing it. It was all a fantastic experience. Mm. So much so that I I have a hard time in Canada when people ask me to teach them something, for example. Mm. I have a hard time charging them money because uh. I, I never I never paid a cent to learn music when I was a kid. You know, my, <laughs> right. my father was my teacher, right? Right. But I I I think God given talent is is something that we have to respect, we have to understand understand. Mm. And people that are talented, I think um, if they get an education, they can only do amazing things for the world. Right. So why making that happen or not, you know, putting money in the middle? You know what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the that you can hear that, obviously, in your music, obviously, that that influence of, you know, growing up there and everything. But I, I also found, you know, in kind of researching, you've always kind of wanted to get out of the whatever box you're in you're like ah let me let me let me try this here let me try that there and and a, a you know a big life change for you was when in 1999 you moved to to Canada and so what was i mean talk about that and i mean it must have been a somewhat dramatic sort of culture shock although you not your first time there necessarily but moving right. there and living there and how was that and you know how was that adjustment and then how did that affect your your creativity in in music it was uh, it, uh, it was an incredible thing that I went through, you know, mm. um, moving from Cuba to Canada. In Cuba, I was already starting to make some waves, right? As a bass player, yeah. Nobody ever knew me in Cuba as a singer songwriter, right? Ever, right? <laughs> My dad, and you know, once in a while he will tell me, "Don't sing, cause uh, I don't think you have uh, a voice <laughs> of a singer," kind of thing, you know. But uh, oh I was already, you know, really running fast on the bass, and right? Everything. And um, so Canada was like nothing I expected. Let's start saying that because mm. I couldn't imagine what was going to happen to right. me. I went to Canada for love um, following mm -hmm. my wife. Mm -hmm. That allowed me to sort of really don't feel any tension or any Mm. Pain, you know, even for, or any or, or miss my country either, you know, even right because I was I was with my with my girl, well, right. my woman, you know, and and my son. We already had a you know mm. when I moved to Canada, we are we already had our first son, you know, and um, so I didn't look back. I didn't get trapped in any feelings right. uh, or, or in any thought of missing my country. And for me, I had the responsibility to be a, fa a father to provide for my house, for my home, and I was. With the with the, 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 the with my woman, my, the love of my life. So yeah. I, I joke about this sometimes. I say we could move to to the <laughs> desert, you know, right? To in the middle of uh, anywhere in the world, yeah. it would have been the same. Right. I um, you know, that made me think of the people that immigrate be, mm. against their will, you know, because right. they're gonna get killed in the country or something right. like that, and they have to run away from the country. Mm. Those people never, unfortunately, they almost never get used to the new country. Right. Because they can't. You know, they, and, came, they didn't immigrate because they wanted to, you know right. what I mean? So it's a whole different thing. I feel lucky. Yeah. That, that so it, the whole, the whole, the whole idea of going somewhere else for you was something 
beautiful and new and yeah. exciting. Whereas, you know, for someone who goes through trauma, it's probably always going to yeah. be associated with that. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And and it makes uh, it, it makes for for a for a fast adjustment to the country. No, yeah. wasting any time in trying to get adjusted, but instead really putting your eyes immediately into what you want to do. Right. And I got there and mm. I didn't waste any time. I, I remember yeah. mm -hmm. making this little um, sign that said, hot Cuban bass player in town. <laughs> hot new, no, new hot Cuban bass player in town. And I took it to to um, all of the music stores in town. Yeah. And one good day, you know, one fine and beautiful day, yeah. the song rang, I remember... Uh, it was a message. We were we went out for a walk. My wife and I and Daniel was little, my my son, mm -hmm. my oldest. And when we came back, I remember seeing the flashlight on the phone. Yeah. And I, oh, that is because I was expecting somebody to call me. I started listening to the message. I didn't hardly speak in English, mm. spoken English back then. And so I, I have of the message. I rewind it and give it to, to my wife. I said, I think it's for me. I said, What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> and it was a band, a local band mm, from Victoria. Mm. Looking for for me to play with them. Yeah. They had a, some sort of African influence in their uh -huh. music, and they thought that I was going to be a good fit. I went, and the rehearsal was the rehearsal was at a music studio. When I saw that, I said, "Oh my God, yeah, this is what I was looking for." <laughs> yeah, we rehearsed. They lost my playing, and then at the end, I said, "Hey, man, how can I record some music here?" Right. I ain't got any money. Yeah. But I got music. Right. <laughs> and he said, "Ah, uh, maybe yeah, maybe some some day or whatever, you know." Right. Well, the day after after that, he started hearing Buena Vista Social Club. Mm, mm -hmm. He started hearing Cuba everywhere mm -hmm. because Buena Vista was red hot mm -hmm. in America, right? And and then he called me and said, Did, ever since you talked to me, I see Cuba everywhere. Can yeah. we do something? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's do something. And that was the beginning. So wow. um, that just goes to say that um, how it was for me, it was revolutionary in many, in many yeah. ways. It made me start singing, for instance. Right. You know, I... I don't have a typical sounding Cuban voice. Mm. And let me explain that. Typical sounding Cuban voices are bright, big, they are ready and, you know, uh, capable of commanding a 16 piece band. You yeah. go, oh, yeah, you know. The, yeah. But I have this smoky, soulful sounding voice mm -hmm. that a, you know, it's really bright, I guess, and beautiful in in certain uh, situations you know, and, and places, and you know, and things. That's why I also love doing solo shows it's yeah. because of that. People can really hear me, right? But I would have not not know that about my voice if I never left Cuba, right? What people are used to it is to the other voice, right? Right. So here I am. Estoy aquí, vine a buscar tu corazón, porque no te olvido. And you know now I go there and people ask me to sing. I would love to hear you. I don't yeah. hear you now, now, right? <laughs> now they do. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't have a chance. Yeah. Uh, to to even begin to do it, right? Isn't that so, interesting? How you you kind of have to get out, or you have to, you know, it, or it helps maybe to get out of that that environment that is kind of that box or whatever it is to yeah. to go to go. Oh, maybe I could try to you know sing over here, and then everyone's like. Whoa, you know, like, and then you, and then you realize it about yourself it happened too. Happened to me, kind of. Yeah, the first I mean, time. so I, 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 I was walking with my wife one <laughs> one afternoon, and I saw this poster advertising for a festival in Victoria, BC. This was like three months after I got there. It was called the Festival of the Arts, and mm -hmm. how they were doing it was they were they were accepting submissions, mm -hmm. and the idea was to select fifteen delegates from the whole province of British Columbia, and but you have to pay some money for the submission, you know. So mm -hmm. I had, the submission was $75, mm -hmm. and I had 80 in my pocket. <laughs> and I didn't know how much I was going to make the next day or anything. I didn't know. Mm. And I said to my wife, no, I'd love to do that, but no, maybe maybe I, I won't be being, yeah, maybe I'm not being responsible by doing yeah. that. And she, she said, no, 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 do it. Do, 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 do it. <laughs> I applied as a bass player. Right. Because I came with from Cuba with demos of my bass playing and stuff. Yeah. And I got approved. As one of the fifteen delegates, you know, when when the festival mm. started, it was a three day thing. It was mostly workshops, mm. and then the last day was a big show at a theater in Victoria. Mm. The second day, I got a little bit more confident, and during a recess, <laughs> I asked one of the participants there, "Can you let me borrow your guitar?" Because I, I went there, I went there with my bass. Yeah. So and he came, oh, yeah, I play, and I started playing, and without thinking, I started singing. 
Yeah. And one of the instructors there saw me and came back. <laughs> slowly, came came up to me slowly from behind. Me. And then when I was done, he touched and said, hey, I didn't know you sing. <laughs> I didn't know you had such a beautiful voice. You apply here as a bass player. We're all really yeah. enjoying your, your, you know, your Jaco Pastorio <laughs> Latin, yeah. you know, thing. And, um, but, but now here you're singing and it's, it's, you have this beautiful voice. What's yeah. up with that? And I'm like, no, 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 I don't sing. I don't sing. I put the guitar down. He <laughs> said, no, no, no. I will ask you to please sing tomorrow at the show. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, okay, I think about it. He said, please, please do it. Yeah. Well, he gave me this huge introduction mm -hmm. to about 600 people watching. Wow. In the, in the theater in Victoria. And he gave me this huge introduction. And as soon as I opened my mouth, man, mm. everybody was on their feet. Yeah. So that was the beginning of me singing. Mm. Wow. What a, what an amazing like feeling that must have been, you know? It blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I got emotional in the middle of it. Yeah, I almost yeah. cried, you know, I almost lost it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, but it was wow. so beautiful. Wow. That's so cool. That's so inspiring, you know, to, to I think for people who maybe feel stuck or, you know, if they are creative people, if they, they're in a rut or whatever, sometimes a, a change of scenery or like just because someone has told you, you know, you're this, you're not that. I, I spent a little time in Nashville and, and you get, you get pigeonholed very quick in Nashville. Like you're, but, he, you know, you're this, you're, you're only that. Yeah. And so if I was an engineer or whatever, like I can never be like a songwriter, you know? And so if you have songs, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're, you're timid about them or you're yeah. not, you're not confident, you know? And yeah. so, so that's an, insp that's really inspiring. Now I, I read, uh, also that, um, during the pandemic, you learned, uh, like, like a lot of people, you learned a new skill and that is to, uh, <laughs> that is to, uh, record yourself. And, yeah. uh, so, so tell me about that and the music you were recording, um, during that time. Um, well, I, I, um, uh, I've been using, you know, a little bit of technology. I've been recording a little bit for a little while just to do my demos. Sure. And never really believing that I was that, that was going to be a professional thing, you know. I do my demo because I capture, you know, ideas. Yeah. And then when it's time to go to the studio, I just go to uh, to the studio. Yeah. Fly away from my house, you know, go to a city and record an album. Yeah. Well, that changed with the pandemic. Right. I I I, I um, and I, actually this was almost a lucky a lucky thing. Mm. CBC Radio, which is the, our mm -hmm. national radio in Canada, right after uh, Bill Withers passed, you know, passed away. Right. They somebody came up with the idea of, of making a, a tribute show to the, to Bill at CBC Radio, uh, but because they couldn't bring artists in to the studio, right? They, the way they had to to do it was by asking every artist they wanted to be part of it um, to send a recording already of one of the of Bill's songs. Mm. You know? they, I got this email from them. They asking me if I telling me that they would love to have my participation. You know, mm. I thought about that for like I don't know almost a whole day. Mm -hmm. And I almost said, no, I was already, <laughs> like many other people, in kind of entering kind of a, you know, like a dark cloud because yeah. my whole tour has come down right. crumbling. I had a massive tour here in the US just right. before that. And it was like crazy. It was like, where are we going? You know? Mm. So, I wasn't into recording, you know, a call yeah. or something like that. And then, um, my better half, my wife was, you know, <laughs> she co-managed my career with me. Mm. And she's like, don't make an emotional decision. Think about it. This mm. could be cool. I said, okay. Mm. So uh, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that made me go to my garage where I have my stuff. Yep. And move them to my living room. Set mm -hmm. up a little desk in the corner of my living room there. Set up my toys, you know, my yep. preamp, my interface, my microphone, and start recording. I did a version of uh, just the two of us, actually. Mm -hmm. And well. I finished that. I mixed it the best I could. It was funny while I was recording it, my neighbor had a diesel truck that he was fixing. Yeah. <laughs> and he would turn around, you know, <laughs> and let it run for like 40 minutes yeah. and then get in it, go around the block, come back, leave it running for 20 more minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to do this. Gotta... Yeah. Oh, finally. You know, so I did it. Right. I mixed it the best I could, sent it to CBC Radio. When I they got it, I sent it really late at night. It was like two in the morning for mm. me. Or something. I sent it to them the next morning, early in the morning. I got an email from them saying, "Alex, you 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 made us cry here. Oh. This is so beautiful. We love this. Oh my god!" And I'm like, "What? Wow! What, what for real?" <laughs> so I sent it to my my mixing engineer, 
who I who I haven't worked with as a mixing engineer only yet. You know, was the pandemic that made it that made it that made us have a different relationship because I, I will hire him to come record me, you know, to go to the studio, whatever. Yeah. And then he mixes. But with the pandemic, he started mixing my tracks. So mm. I sent the song to to him and he was like, dude, this is beautiful. Send me the tracks. I'd like to mix this for you. Yeah. If you don't like it, you don't have to pay me anything. Send me the tracks. Mm. I sent him the tracks, man. And when he sent it back to me, I was like, oh, holy cow. <gasps> I can recall myself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And I recorded a whole album yeah. in my living room. Mm-hmm. A whole album. And that yeah. album ended up winning a Grammy yeah. <laughs> last year for best Latin pop album right right in my living room. Wow. Since then, I uh, of course, now I have a studio. Right. I, I took it seriously. I have to have a studio. Right. So my garage, I turned it, the whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's a building, separate building behind my house. Okay. The whole thing now is a studio. Wow. It's um, beautiful we, because it's, I live in a place where it's, you know, it's, so much, it's so cold in the winter. Yeah. We the the floor we have heating floor heated floors right so that uh, it's silent and I can right. work there in the winter. Mm. But I, man, it's my space. I have a hard time now living in that space. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> so one more question before I let you go because I gotta let you go because you're gonna play a show here. Um, you've played, you know, and I've seen you. Uh, well. One and a half questions, because I, I remember, you know, you mentioned you're playing bass, and I watched your Tiny Desk concert, which just just came out a couple of days ago, which was amazing and so much fun. And uh, and I noticed you took a solo on this song, Check It A, and uh, you, were, you were playing like a bass. <laughs> you were, you were playing your solo like a bass you're guitar. Musician, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, damn, like he's... <laughs> Like he's he's a bass player actually because you're yeah. doing this little melody I, thing and you're you're just doing two fingers and I'm like okay he's a bass player well, so um, yeah people ask me hey you, you people you know people are intrigued because I don't, I don't use a peak when I play right, right. you never use you, you never use a use a peak when you play no I play with my fingers yeah the only peak that I use is one <laughs> but sometimes I I joke with it. I, I I play the guitar with this you know yeah. people. <laughs> It's my hair pick. That's amazing. No, uh-huh. but so, you know, watching that and then I've seen, you know, a, a few live performances just on online with you and everything, but then um, you're doing the solo show tonight. Um, and what do you, uh, you know, what do you love about doing solo shows as opposed to, um, you know, shows shows with a band? And because on um, like your tiny desk, you had, you know, a bunch of really yeah. fun percussion and backing vocals and stuff. It was great. Yeah. But then, then you know, talk about the solo thing and why you why you like doing that. What's special about that? It's funny. The night, the, the day that uh, my um, tiny desk came out, I had some some friends in, in California mm. that I haven't seen for like in 10 years. Or so. mm. And they went to my solo show that night mm, mm. in California. It's funny. They went back home <laughs> and I started getting these messages. Yeah. <laughs> I just finished watching your show, uh, the, your tiny desk, tiny desk show. Yeah, uh, I, we loved it. It's beautiful, but man, your solo show, <laughs> hands down. What's going on? I'm like, whoa. Well, I say it has that effect on people. Yeah. Number one, I'm free. Right. Band shows, they have to be. I mean, I still sort of take it any way I want, but they are somehow in some sort of shape and form. Yeah, you're right? boxed in a little bit yeah. at least. Yeah. Um, that's number thing. That's number one. Number two, uh, what I like about, this, about the solo shows, my music is about details. Mm. I look at music from the inside out, meaning for me the most important thing is the song, the composition mm. on mm. its own. Uh, anything else comes after, right? You know, good arrangement, a good solo, right. but the most important thing is the song. So a show, a solo show, like the one I'm gonna play tonight, lets people see really inside, right? Music. Right. And that's what I think is my favorite way of communicating mm. with people, uh, letting them see that. Right. And also, a lot of people see it as a superpower to stand in front of an audience yeah. for, I don't know, for like two hours straight and, yeah. uh, and you know, entertain with mm-hmm. what you got. I also love telling stories and making jokes and taking the show wherever people want to go. You know, right. it's like. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm. Mm, I don't know what I like more. You know, yeah. I, I can tell you that I, I enjoy both. Yeah. 
but I've done pretty powerful and beautiful things on my own. Yeah. And in Canada, it has been a revolution for me because mm-hmm. I am the, the probably the first Latin act in Canada mm. that's singing 100% in Spanish, a show. Right. A, entertains an audience for two hours of a thousand people or right. something like that on my own. And then yeah. you get an encore after that. So it's like, right. I think, and then people come out of the show and say, I've seen so many of your shows and this yeah. has been my favorite. So. Right. Well, it had that, I can say it had that effect on even just the, the, the crew that was here, you know, just watching you and you were just enjoying yourself up there. You know, you played th- four or five songs, you know, just like you were like, Oh man, it sounds great. I'm going to keep going. And the crew is just like, you know, it's just like locked in. You're getting applause for your sound check. And so we definitely experienced that. So <laughs> that, I always, yeah. always appreciate when that happens. Because, yeah. You know, you guys, in places like this, you see a lot of music. You see a lot of musicians. Right. Yeah. And it's always a wow. It's always so yeah. beautiful to receive that. Yeah. I, I, I am blessed with some, something in music that I still ha- I don't know how I do it. Mm. You're going to listen tonight. Yeah. Um, no song of mine sounds like any other mm. of my own. I can play mm. two hours. Mm-mm. And every single song is different, and I was taking that for granted. But one yeah. time, somebody brought it to my attention. I'm like, "It's difficult to do if you think about it." Right. It never happened. Right. It's just on its own, and mm. that's the way I understand music. It's, it's the way, mm. or maybe it's because I never got a like I said. I don't know if, if I said this to you before. I never got a like a super massive head on my own that I still enjoy freedom. You know, right? Creative freedom. Right, so you're not you're not locked into one you know, kind of genre yeah. necessarily. If I get yeah. ahead of something, maybe maybe it boxes me. Yeah, right? yeah. So from that point forward, you're afraid, <laughs> right. you know. But I don't think yeah. I will because mm. I, I'm an artist at heart. Yeah, and that's the most important thing for me. Right. Right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down uh, with us and and chatting a little bit. And all of you out there, definitely go check out alexcuba.com for any uh, other tour dates and like music and. You know, he doesn't have any merch tonight because he sold out of all of it, you know, before he got here. So we're like, you, you know, go order stuff online, pre-order stuff uh, wherever uh, wherever that stuff sold and definitely stream all of Alex's uh, music. It's got a Thank robust you. catalog of music that weaves in and out of different genres. And there's some electronic stuff in there. And there's obviously uh, the Cuban uh, influence in there as well. So thank you so much again. And, and thank you. Uh, this I'm really looking forward to the show tonight. To thank okay. You. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for KPC Underground. If you're enjoying this podcast, please consider supporting KPC at kpcenter.org slash donate. Your generosity helps us keep this and other programs going at Kirkland Performance Center. Be sure to check out our website for the latest events coming up. And hey, we'd also love to hear from you. Please rate our podcast, like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. And if you have a specific question or an idea for a show, email us at podcast at kpcenter.org. Thanks for listening.